Okay, something in the middle, something enjoyable or interesting, and some sort of support system so people don't feel alone or too lost. This sounds like mentalizing. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, you want to know you're on the right path. On that, so yeah. I wish they would have called me. I know exactly how it would feel and how it would but... look like, and yeah. Mm -hmm. That's true. So I think mentalizing is a, a British term, or does anyone have any idea what it means? We have to think about why is this person asking this question now? And we work that out by working out what's going on in their mind. You know, what's behind that question? What's in their mind that makes them ask the question? What's in their mind that makes them behave like this? You're trying to help them maintain mentalizing whilst actually reworking the trauma experiences. Mm -hmm. They have to maintain the mentalizing. Help them be able to keep themselves on track, keep mm -hmm. themselves online whilst they're then presenting the trauma experience. And we do this in actually a group. They have to maintain the mentalizing in actually a group, maintain the mentalizing. Can we try to mentalize a persuasive pitch to simplify mentalization and to present it in a way that makes it uh, approachable, attractive, interesting for uh, a default culture, a default audience that's uh, somewhat uh, unfamiliar and unskilled at mentalization and maybe even dismissive of it. We could consider this a mentalization exercise to see can we use our brains to try to mentalize a way to present mentalization so that both we can absorb it better but also in a way to talk about it to make it more attractive to the masses and future generations of your kids and other people's younger generations to bring back the benefit of mentalization and more perspectives. Have to maintain the mentalizing in actually a group, maintain the mentalizing, group, maintain the mentalizing. Because even when you're describing it, Sean Paul, you're sort of using an acad academic lens to say, this is just taught. Maintain the mentalizing. Mm -hmm. Versus it's not taught, it's yeah. sort of this uh, meta framing versus role modeling mentalization on the fly. That's sort of the tricky part of the presentation. Maintain the mentalizing. Yeah, I understand. I could describe it, I could promote it, but that's not role modeling mentalization, which is the, the nitty gritty part of uh, how other people learn mentalization by having me and everybody else try to work on the edge of our mentalization capability. Yeah have to maintain the mentalizing in actually a group maintain the mentalizing yeah like got an english teacher who was really good in, at that oh yeah <laughs> yeah i mean you have to show it have to maintain the mentalizing in actually a group maintain the mentalizing see so even your education has limits of it even though they talked about it yeah right now it's putting you on the spotlight the thing, you know. yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I'm, I'm looking at all the perspectives like how There has to be a curiosity to, to have more uh, perspectives. If that's not the case, that's difficult. If it's not the case, are you saying you're helpless at creating a curiosity in other people? Yeah. Oh, why do you give up so easy? No, I don't give up. That's just one perspective I'm, I'm looking yeah, at. Yeah, that's why I'm trying to throw another perspective. Mm -hmm. 
I think to be effective in sales, you have to be doing that all the time. Like that, that, that yeah. is, that's the, that's the skill that you need to be strong in. Well, maybe First American culture has more marketing skills, but marketing is a, a subset of mineralization to try to sell a product or get a certain name where mentalization might be more about uh, a yeah. broader skill of yeah. of getting collective mineralization. So how much does a salesperson say, oh, let me see what your needs are. Let me put that on the table and override my desire to make profit. <laughs> no, but that you have to, though, like to, to be good well, at you it. To that's what you absolutely have to that do. It looks like that. Yeah. To, not, to make a win-win. That would be how they would pitch it. Yeah. Well, you can't pitch it to, I mean. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So. yeah. But then you're limiting it again because you have this goal. A mentalization doesn't have the goal to sell anything. It's the, it has, the goal yeah. is to absorb and to make your view wider. Yeah, I'm, I'm using visual. I don't know how this feels. Absorb and make your view wider. Okay. Yeah. It's very difficult for me. Well, maybe that's why I'm good at sales. It's <laughs> like I never approach it with with a um, a goal of, of, of force any, forcing anything down anyone's throat. I'm the, the goal is to find the, the best solution for their problem. Well, right there, best solution to the problem. That's a certain mentalization framework that you're going towards in expectation. That's sort of what I've been fighting with a lot of Western education. People have been programmed to get towards a goal. And that mindset of getting towards a goal or getting the right answer, I would argue gets in the way of mentalization. It creates blind spots yeah, for perspectives because you want to get the right answer or you want to avoid failing. That filters how you're perceiving stuff. Or it also takes away space of seeing what other people's perspectives are because you want to get the answer. You're not thinking about what the other person, what does, do they want to get the answer or what do they want to do? Because you're focused on getting the answer <laughs> or not getting it wrong. That, that creates blind spots that filters your perspective. And that limits you. I mean, limits you, okay? you're not getting through what's more efficient because it's, it's every time you get more perspectives and more options, you get to more efficient and more effective. And then you try that out and then it's like if you build up a, a, a IT system, it's also constant improving and having new visions and new perspectives on that system. Yeah, you're selling the idea of mentalization, but how much are you role modeling it? Not enough, I think. See? <laughs> no, it's really hard to explain because okay so this might be one thing feeling westerners have this anxiety about not knowing yeah that came up in my recent co coaching and the one hour waiting in line for a prescription just sitting with waiting caused anxiety Sitting without some answer or some cheerleading caused anxiety in a couple case studies in person or on Zoom. And now it might be increased because we have social media and Netflix that allows us to watch the next thing instantly. So we don't have to wait for the next episode. <laughs> this sort of instant demand, instant on microwave, instant texting, all this stuff has uh, conditioned us to get the stuff now or soon. We can't wait. We have difficulty just digesting stuff slowly. 
could this get in the way of absorbing other perspectives? That used to be the water cooler talk of Seinfeld or Friends. You would watch the episode and you could talk among the water cooler about different perspectives of that episode. So you could get more body of how that episode landed on people. Then you could take in the next episode a week later, not 10 episodes in the same night. <laughs> so just by design, our modern culture is sort of making ourselves in echo chambers or silos of the same perspective just due to the easy access of stuff and just binging content, weakening our muscle of mentalization. So how can I sell this? It sounds so boring and slow and anxiety and torturous to spend time trying to make room for other perspectives. Well, that, why would you do that? Maybe that's why DJ left. He's like, oh, what is all this stupid shit? Where's my validation? I don't know. <laughs> that's so boring. Where's the superego injection? Where's something? What's with all this? I don't know, because we, we don't have this perspective. That's what people do. They hide and leave, because that's boundaries. Chantal stumped. It took that long to say. Yeah, I, 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 I'm really <laughs> flabbergasted that someone. How? Yeah, because then you're limiting yourself so much. Like you get this, this, this monkey brain. Why do you? Why do we want that? Are you judging monkeys like Pankaj <laughs> judges fish? No, but I mean, <laughs> you're human. We are humans. We have this. It... But look at your argument is like sort of like incredulous, but you're also like the, you're not considering the perspective of the non mineralizer. Yes. Yeah. So... yeah. <laughs> That's not role modeling mentalization if you're sort of just dismissing non mentalizer and saying, What the fuck's wrong with you, stupid people? Mm, do I say that? No, How is that going to land just... on non mentalizers, mentalizers where you guys, where you're sort of saying, Why wouldn't you do this? It's so obvious. How is that going <laughs> to sell to a non mentalizer? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, that's true. So that's sort of showing you aren't using your mentalization skills to consider the audience in your uh -huh. pitch of trying to. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I think part of its urgency. So. If there isn't room to consider and entertain perspectives and just hang out and like not knowing, is mentalizing better? Is non mentalizing better? Is, uh, you know, rigid frame monkey brain, how's that better? How is slower mentalizing better? Can we have space to entertain these different things? That has to be a role model with patience, with curiosity, with room instead of the sort of that's terrible. Why are you, why is that so fucking stupid? That's not role modeling, mentalizing. And now that Zoe is here, we have a, her, she's going to give us the answer. Zoe is here. Zoe's here. What's Maybe. up? Zoe is here. Zoe's here. Zoe is here. We have been struggling with how to sell mentalization and Chantal described some of it, but she's presenting it in a less than ideal way. <laughs> so we yes. need some Australian wisdom.
Oh no. Just, I think I feel a bit of pressure right now. Why would you feel pressure? <laughs> I just said you just need to save us. That's not pressure. Okay. Is it? <laughs> I'm a great savior. Ah, there you go. Have you heard of the term mentalization? Do they use that in Australia? Sometimes, I think, has happened once or twice. What does it mean? Because us stupid Americans are like, what the fuck is this word? And why would you bother with perspectives and slow shit like mentalization? Mm -hmm. Holly gave us some Google answer that I, I didn't bother to read. It's pretty good if you want to have relationships with people. Uh, it's good. Would it get in the way of limerence? Yeah, it might actually. Yeah. I don't know. Why would you want to ruin your fantasy bonds and limerence with something like mentalization and considering other people have different minds and different perspectives and different opinions? Why would you want to infect your brain with that? Wouldn't that be introducing complexity in your brain? Messing up idealization and devaluing and scapegoating and triangulation it would like fuck up all these defenses. Yeah, it really would, I think. Yeah. So mentalization is like a pretty horrible thing. <laughs> Why? Ruins defenses, it ruins limerence, it ruins fantasy, it forces, it makes other people have different minds and different perspectives and that. And that's, that's terrible? Slower. Yeah. Okay. You're not convinced, Zoe? I don't know, you might have to sell it harder. That mentalization is bad? Yeah. It's slow. It's tiring. It's exhausting. Relaxing? It, that sounds it's relaxing. It's not relaxing. Why is it relaxing? Slow, easy. Yeah, just take oh, time. Why is it easy? Okay. Why are you not rushing? Why would it be easy? We have to consider other people's perspectives, ask them, investigate, investigate our own perspectives. Why would people want to do that? No, it could be interesting. Investigate could a bit. Could be like surprising. You could find out scary shit. Like you've been self-deceiving yourself. Or your imposter mm -hmm. syndrome is like way bigger than you thought. Why would you want to uncover that? Well, I guess that that's where the excitement comes in. Yeah, that's negative excitement. That's it. <laughs> Shame inducing, anxiety inducing to find out stuff about you that's that's worse than you thought, that's hard to digest. Mm -hmm. I don't know, some people are thrill seekers. Okay, that's what I've been trying to do, how to sell mentalization as a thrilling experience, but I was struggling. You made interesting counters about it, but are your counters coming from a mentalization stance or is it coming from a schizoid answer? Um. Well, I'm considering it and I'm thinking, well, what is good about mentalization? What's good about insight? And I think um, if you're curious and if you're 
somebody who does like surprises, even though they might be terrifying, then you might enjoy some mentalization. Even if they might be ter terrifying? Well, yeah, people, people watch horrors. People do things that are scary, jump out of planes. Maybe this is a mental jump out of the plane moment. Okay, how many people jump out of a plane with, like, an untested parachute? Well, you haven't tested it until you have to use it, really. It's your... How, do, how else do you test it? <laughs> There's say. protocols that people would probably join a more established airplane parachute company other than just diving down into that submarine with like haphazard carbon fiber uh, <laughs> used parts that blew up. <laughs> well, I mean, there are people who did go in it and do like the terror, even if it's terrible. I don't know. Because there was a lack of providers, so those billionaires mm -hmm. went for that. Okay, so let's go use a cluster B angle. Mentalizing could be framed as exciting. It opens up some sudden uh, realization. Uh, but why would that be more exciting versus a borderline who can fall into like emotional acting out and just ride out an impulsive emotional wave? Wouldn't that be a higher, higher, higher high than mentalizing? Hmm. I have to consider that a bit more. I mean, in the moment when you're caught up and you're impulsive, you just get pulled by that emotion and that's easy. <clears throat> mm. To take a break and stop, pause, <clears throat> consider other people's perspectives and your perspective and stuff, that would be less exciting than just going with the impulse. Wouldn't it? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> so you're getting me now. Got me on this. <laughs> this is the pain of mentalizing. You're saying it's all exciting to get these new insights. You see how uncomfortable <laughs> holding different perspectives are, considering different options, and just staying in this sort of <clears throat> holding split. Essentially, mm -hmm. mentalizing is not just combining the split. Mentalizing is maybe adding three or four perspectives all at once and trying to not fall apart. Yeah. Yeah. How exciting is that? It is. It's exciting, though. I might not know how to... Well, I, I don't know. I think looking for the answer is not mentalizing. So I'm just, <laughs> it's slow. Yeah, it is slower. It's slower, but it's wrestling with different potentials and perspectives. Weighing them out, playing with this angle, and let's jump to this angle, let's entertain this, entertain that. And let's just stay in this sort of murkiness. Yeah. You've been trying to pitch that it's exciting. How exciting is your emotional tone? I don't feel tons of dopamine coming out of you. <laughs> mm. So that's me testing your perspective by trying to mentalize. You've made an assertion. Oh, it's exciting in this. Well, I'm testing it. How much are you acting excited <laughs> when I'm interacting with you in a mentalizing hey, maybe perspective? Maybe less, less excitement. Um, okay. I like the challenge though. Now that might be the positive. So mentalizing is a challenge that's building your muscle mm. to consider perspectives, to hang out in this sort of wrestling place, which isn't unpleasant, but I don't know if it's dopamine 
it's not going to be as high as the limerites. I don't, I'm guessing yeah, it probably yeah. would be difficult to be love fantasy limerites level. It could be a nice redirect of anxiety. That could be a pitch. Yeah, I think that. Because I feel sort of grounded, but also still engaged. So what if mentalizing practice grounds you without you having to do breathing techniques? Yeah, maybe. Without you memorizing a bunch of DBT charts and policing yourself to make sure you're grounded. You could just be in a, around other people to do co collective mentalizing to explore different perspectives, test out your perspective and just get a better grasp of a certain topic or a certain word or a certain definition. And then now you're more comfortable with what we're talking about mentalizing, but we're also talking about we're trying, I'm trying to show how it works live fire. Yeah. It also feels more connective, connect, uh, building connection, building bridges. But aren't I also challenging bridges too? She started yeah. off with this excitement and then I sort of challenged that. Chantal started on like, on, oh, we teach mentalization here and you Westerners are just stupid. What's wrong with you? And I sort of challenged that. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> yeah. good. So, so that wasn't building a direct bridge. That was sort of pushing and <laughs> inviting a new bridge or a new, a new connection. I feel that. I feel connection and I feel engaged also. Like you're ah, questioning so. me. So I feel like, hey, this is important. This is, we're trying to find something together, a togetherness. So mentalizing role model and done together might be uh, a practice that naturally brings a feeling of togetherness or collective focus. For me, it does, yes. Yeah, it's like a grounded inviting, in a way. Inviting everyone to be in something. So how many therapists, when you go to therapy, they have this grounded inviting stance? Zero. <laughs> where you feel invited and it's grounded and there's a discovery, a sort of exploration or let's share this journey. Never. Um, I always feel pushed something down my throat or feeling not good enough. Not good enough. Yeah. Super ego injunctions, shame, yeah. pressure. Mm-hmm. Mm. Deficient. I often feel deficient. Oh, deficient. So me talking about mentalization and pointing out the flaws or the overextended perspectives by Chantal's uh, mentalizing is just no brainer. And Zoe's, oh, it's exciting and all this stuff. Me pushing against that didn't make either of you feel deficient. No. At all. No. No. How could me criticizing and actually giving good pressure against pretty strong stances cause no deficiency? That's rather unusual. No, I rather feel seen and taken seriously and inviting, invited oh, taken to, seriously. To, mm. to consider and to rethink and yeah, I feel part of of something included. Yeah. So if the whole education system or a good amount of the education system or just therapy 
had more of mentalization as a, as a foundation, could that help a lot of mental health issues of loneliness, uh, shame, deficiency, uh, confusion, emotional dysregulation? Could a lot of mental health issues just be uh, lowered if there is more of a mentalization substructure in support groups and therapy and classes and stuff like that? Yeah, gosh. Instead of going through all these stories, yeah. Yeah, instead of getting Please. lost in stories, one story after other, and then you're falling into their dissociation and their trauma flooding when they tell their story, and, and you do it back, and that's the bonding, the sort of dissociative, lost in each other's story type of connection. I, I don't feel connected there. I yeah. feel bored out of my mind. <laughs> and and often, often I feel like I'm the only one who doesn't get what's going on. Mm -hmm. But that could be my my autistic brain. I mean, there's the lesson. There's the lesson. Anything more to add? <clears throat> that follows his pattern. So I guess we'll get used to that. <clears throat> Let's see. So we did some role modeling of mentalization to try to figure out some sort of positive pitch. And we got some feedback about it being grounded, inviting, creating feelings of being seen and taken seriously, even when there's strong pushback, which is pretty amazing for just a basic case study, uh, a basic survey, reality testing. <clears throat> Are any of the other witnesses uh, impressed by this mentalization or is there still some skepticism or sitting on the sidelines about what the fuck is this weird mentalization shit still trying to figure out what it is well isn't it what deep does all the time though like isn't he just t he's just telling us what he does I feel when I'm dialoguing with Dave, that's what he's doing. That's, that's how also he keeps the up. challenge of this topic. Oh, we're going, oh, weren't I doing this already? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's role model. Like, this, like, I don't, uh, I, I'm a little frustrated, to be but honest. Maybe having a model <laughs> of emphasizing it has allowed Chantal and Zoe to feel more grounded and invited and accepting the pushback <laughs> and feeling the included. So the added pointer of describing the process on the fly <clears throat> might be needed instead of me just doing it for everybody or taking the stance. There needs to be more of an invitation for other people to join in. There does? Apparently, I mean, there does. I mean, they don't, do yeah, they? <laughs> that's a case study. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm too frustrated. I, I'm going to... Sorry. I. That's why. Okay. She's too frustrated. We will mentalize on that. <laughs> <clears throat> so, maybe it's not the technique we're still thinking in like uh framing things good or bad uh, non-mentalization probably has its upsides it's faster if you want to disperse information fast you make everyone follow authority and you just send it down the line and everyone memorizes it 
and goes out into the field. So super ego injunctions are probably more efficient. And if some people don't want to be part of the leadership and they just want to play it safe, that's probably much more efficient. Mentalization combined collective trying to invite people into working relationships and also maybe challenging everybody to step up their mentalization game. That's a slower sell. So not just me role modeling it, I might need to actively pressure people to what's your stance? Why do you have this stance? Maybe there's a counter stance that's hidden in there. Why don't you speak it out? Why don't you throw it into the room? This, this, uh, Opposite this reaction from others ha might have to might need to be pulled out of people. It's not just gonna always come up to the surface. But people need to go and think for themselves. They need to what? Think for themselves instead of just copying shit. They have to figure out stuff for themselves. Just copying shit. Are you presenting things from a perspective or are you presenting things from a right and wrong moral position? Yeah, right and wrong. I'm judging. See? Yeah. Judging, yeah. Why do you feel you, you need to add urgency into the system? That's a good question. That's one of maybe one of your triggers, a discomfort for maybe people who are on the other side because they've abused non mineralization. <clears throat> Maybe you've been on the receiving end of people that are shoving stuff down your throat. Yeah. Yeah. But aren't you yeah, shoving lot. things back down people's throats by saying people need to mentalize? Yes, yeah, true. I do the okay. same. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, this is so but, helpful. Yeah. I'm just giving you the two perspectives and it's up to you to change. See, so I'm using a mentalization persuasion approach to show you what I'm seeing <laughs> and yeah, I'm giving you the perspective of how you're coming across to me and to other people. And then you can consider whether or not you want to change. I'm not telling yeah, you need to do it. <laughs> no, I get a choice. That's yeah. good because that's more space. So do you still feel grounded with my feedback of pushing back on you or even no, calling I feel out your behavior? Now. Yeah. <laughs> you feel what? Triggered. Triggered, but yeah, and, and I want to, a... to go down. Like I want to check in. Like I'm doing the same. How do I do that? So I'm starting this thinking process, analyzing. What am I doing? Yeah, but you're going in there and like you're asking questions. Oh, how did I do that? Let me test out this other person's perspective that's been presented to me. Yeah. <laughs> Let me investigate and see if it's true or not. Yeah. See? That's probably a pretty uh, positive trigger. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. So you had a blind spot. You didn't notice it. I pointed it out and I gave some examples and I didn't point it out in a way that you're feeling shame where you instantly have to change. I pointed it out in a way that triggered investigation, mentalization of yourself where you want to investigate and see if my observation is true or not, how true it is, whether there's more room. That's mentalization. And it's grounding and it's 
it's giving me a lot of space to consider. Yeah, it's like considerate. So, instead of telling people, you're inconsiderate, be more fucking considerate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm mentalizing by being considerate to your perspective, giving you feedback that's contrary to your perspective in a way that you can digest it and mentalize for yourself. So I'm acting out consideration. So you're feeling it's considerate and you're considering the feedback you're receiving. Yeah. And feeling happy that this is recorded so I can have my time to rewatch. To digest what I'm it doing. more on your own. See? Yeah. So even though Ellie's saying this is what I was role modeling, without a bit more active pressure <laughs> or pointing out the process, it doesn't automatically get copied. Because a lot of my role modeling of this is because I did spiritual self-inquiry. So I've already used self-inquiry to reflect and mentalize for myself. It's a reality test. But it, mostly I did it on my own. And then I've had ideals of doing it in dialogue groups, medium groups, uh, encounter groups, but I haven't really seen it actively done. So this is a test bed to try to actively try to coax more mentalization out of you guys to see if it's possible. And then the feedback I'm getting is pretty promising. If how does this relate to this hyper reflexivity? Because is it that I can change this hyper reflection I'm doing into more mentalization? Can I do that? Well, it might be redirecting paranoia and hyper reflexivity of recognizing you have limited perspective so your mind jumps into possibilities yeah. of danger yeah of shape-shifting so you already have a muscle of considering potentials and perspectives but without a test bed a sounding board to talk out and receive feedback actively in a safe way with yeah. epistemological trust so with other people that help us get to know things better to bounce off each other's knowledge, mind thinking, without having that trust, we have all this perspective paranoia. Our paranoia is dumped into all this hyper reflexivity and we just let it fly into danger. Conspiracy here, there, here, here. Yeah, so could we take that hyper reflexivity into a group that does mentalization more actively? and just redirect that uh, different reflections into absorbing actual reflections from people, pushing back on what's real. Is this mirror fake? So I'll destroy it. Is this, is this perspective solid? Okay, that's better. <laughs> and just get a better feel for what we know and what other people know. Yeah. So it's increasing, for me at least, increasing sense-making. Big time. It's mentalization. Big time. Yeah. And then how's your anxiety levels? Good. Oh, I failed at increasing anxiety. That's a good thing. <laughs> Was there anxiety when John shared whatever he shared? Someone might have. <laughs> no, then I'm, I'm like curious. What does he mean? I want to like to hear more of his perspective. Oh, so maybe you're already in a sort of curious mindset. So you can absorb more uh, uncontextual bombs and not be as frazzled. Yeah. My anxiety went way up. At which point? I think when you started speaking with Zoe. 
switching her pressure, putting pressure on her. Yeah. And then did it continue or did it go up and down? How is it? How is that journey gone? It's still high. Is it uh, around a certain theme or is it a timing thing? Because I think when you jumped in earlier, there was some urgency out, out, out of you. Oh, yeah, I felt there was urgency. I, I, yeah. I labeled it frustration. I felt right. I labeled a frustration feeling and then, and yeah, there was, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's so what happened. What's, what do you think? My so mentalization is, has gone offline, apparently. Um, what do you think needs to change so fast? <laughs> brings up this urgency what's what's happening too slow or what's what's anxious is there room to explore that no not right now sorry okay. we can Digest that observation and sharing. Right? Give it more time. Does it feel better that you shared that your your anxiety increased after Zoe, after I started pressuring her, and it's still high? I think the anxiety feels a little better now, but um, there's shame now. So <laughs> shame. So that's no fun. Um, yeah. That's different. So yeah. Different. It's shame because you. Sh disclose that and people know about that disclosure or right and now you look differently in our eyes because you shared that you never know <laughs> <laughs> more great mentalization i know you know <laughs> it's a different perspective so now we have three people Kelly gave a little. I'm, well, I'm curious now. <laughs> no, I like the fact that you shared that. Then I'm curious. Might learn something. Don't know. But if you're curious, if you don't, want to, you if you don't want to, uh, <laughs> uh, if you're feeling like, uh, well, she's yeah. still anxious. So let's give her some space. Sure, sure, yeah. A little urgency there. So now that you're jumping in, <laughs> Kelly, yes. I'm curious how your anxiety levels have changed or your emotional reactions. So when I started pressuring Zoe, did you have an emotional response? I did. Uh, it was a bit more f probably fear. It's like, what's he going to point it at me? <laughs> oh, okay. Felt like a sibling That's getting interesting. grilled or something. Yeah, it was. <laughs> was not a normal reaction by any means, by any stretch. Um, no, Ellie felt anxious. You felt fearful. Maybe it's not an abnormal reaction. Mm. Dang, there goes that. Uh, it's I'm normal then. Pushing a different perspective at you to consider sure, sure. You couldn't reject it. It's yeah, just a trying not to, trying not to. It's, it's hard. You're trying not to reject it? Yeah, I don't know what I'm consider. trying to uh, both at the same time, and it's it's a conflict. <laughs> There's an inner conflict. You're yeah. trying to not reject it, and you're also trying to reject it at the same time. Oh, sure. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, not really. Oh, why? <laughs> it can't be vapor locked. I just won't know what to do. Yeah. Uh, you're wrestling with two different responses mm -hmm. isn't that doing something why does one response have to be better right now why can't you just wrestle with one? two opposites because no. uh, you got to solve it right away 
Aha! You have urgency too. Did Just you catch Ellie's urgency? Is it her fault yes. that you feel urgent? No. Or did you dump your urgency fault, onto her? Maybe. maybe you. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, sure. It's Kelly's fault. Kelly dumped urgency on her. <laughs> Definitely. <Ellie>. Yeah. <laughs> Let it into the room without saying anything. <laughs> so you need a solution. Why do you need do. a solution so fast? So don't get in trouble, I suppose. I don't know. How do you get in trouble for... Me- you think you get in trouble for mentalizing bad? Is that yeah? <laughs> Improper mentalization. <laughs> Didn't I scold Chantal for her poor mentalization? Did she get in trouble? No. Yeah. No. No. I. It's not rational. Or is it? I don't know. That's. You're mentalizing yourself. Is it rational? Mm. Is it not rational? Why does rational or not need to be a category? Hmm. There are a lot of questions. Why does it have to be a category? Um, Make sense of things? I don't know. He's an engineer. <laughs> what yeah. kind of question is that to, for an <laughs> engineer? You're just trying to point point out rationalities. His... <laughs> Things work within <laughs> sets and parameters. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. It's his default. I mean, it's, it's okay to point it out. You're just pointing it out. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you for the save. Well, it's that's my mentalization <laughs> no, of you, Kelly. There you go. Sure. So Ellie <laughs> from her perspective. Yeah. <laughs> So now you can entertain two perspectives or two people's feedback plus your own. Do you still feel so urgent that you need a solution? No, I don't, but. Oh, uh, screwed that up. We're supposed to increase urgency. Yeah. Get with the program, people. Somebody else needs to jump in. Raise anxiety and fear. I will. I thought of something else to Perfect. say if you want, if you really would do it. Sure. Go for it. Dee's going to... Uh-uh. Let her rip. <laughs> right. Right. Because don't forget, Dee, there's no point in letting the anxiety get too high, you know, and stuff. Like, it's it's it, that's counterproductive as well, perhaps, they say. When it gets too high. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Theoretically, at some subjective level. Sure. Um, I think also my my uh, my urgency, my sense of urgency, did start um, actually earlier. But yeah, when Chantal was expressing her her frustration with the the monkey minds who don't um, who aren't interested in mentalizing, um, that is that that was that was the seed for me. Um, and then it just kind of kind of did go from there. And then and then the Zoe approach was different, but also amplifying um mm-hmm. my anxiety and and um urgency so yeah so the monkey part that was a seed why was what was the context that or what was your perspective that caused the seed of urgency or um caught your attention um well i grew up with with um my my parents didn't have any understanding of of a varying uh, capacities in people um intellectual or or you know otherwise um any sort of <laughs> deviance from just sheer genius perfection um mm-hmm. was was outside like if anyone deviated from that that was their own moral failure you know and or failing oh. and and um <laughs> and i sense that occasionally uh it just a little bit like this intolerant intoler- I mean I'm intolerant of things too I'm not I'm not policing intolerant but like there is um an intolerance for uh difference uh, sometimes uh, like different again cognitive abilities interests um um sure. in, in Chantal a little bit sometimes especially yeah um she she just didn't uh, you get frustrated with with differences um and um and that is a trigger of mine um Okay, so maybe her energy of framing that 
was a bit super ego injunction or a non mentalizing presentation like those people with monkey minds yeah they need to change yeah and right. that reminded you of the same sort of a posture or default mindset of your parents yes and that lack of mentalization on their part that i witnessed growing up was destructive and um mm -hmm. um both to them and to those around them like it just it 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 um uh, so it it it, it uh, yeah it was triggering mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah and then and then when you move to zoe her her initial posture of like just like just flippant like well i'll just say the opposite or whatever like that was so um uh, yeah that answers. was also yeah. familiar in a in a different way and 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 it just feels this is so fucking it's so wasteful see i have i do i i've 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 owned my intolerance my lack of ability or to mentalize or i can't maybe i can mentalize schizoid it's just i thought or that that approach but i i reject it i do i i don't want to go there personally sure so um, these two postures yeah energies that chantal and zoe were channeling reminded you of blind spots and defenses of uh dangerous family members yeah right really yeah i'm i'm unwinding this now I, honestly, I went and got a drink too. I wasn't going to drink tonight, but I, I was like, that's where I went. Like when I, but I was just the like, case study. <laughs> so that's helping. Um, is I noticed those postures too. I called them out in a mentalizing way. Yeah. And then I've gotten feedback from both Chantal and Zoe that they felt more grounded and more inviting, so they have more room to consider. So somehow, maybe, or this is the, the pitch. This formal session is me role modeling, mentalizing, and getting feedback from them, people who have been mentalized, with pressure to challenge their perspective and introduce other perspectives. to show another way to call out potentially dangerous uh, defenses. And also disarm those dangerous defenses, which is not discrediting your instant initial reaction, but it's giving you another tool set it is. to consider. It is. Yeah. That's what I'm getting. And I will be reviewing that as well. And um, from that perspective, how to disarm these things. Um, and maybe my own trigger to that, to that, to those. It's disarming these, these things. But Chantal also introduced the idea that hyper -re reflexivity, it could be a way to take our natural paranoia and redirect it to taking more perspectives. Because we're already hard, a lot of trauma survivors, CPTSD, have a lot of hypervigilance. And hypervigilance is you have anxiety and then you're trying to guess at potential dangers that might be coming. If you label that as just perspective taking and mentalization that has a danger bias, huh? you could mentalize in advance. So then you've already mapped out a lot of the territory, your triggers, this other person's patterns. Then you won't need to be hyper vigilant because you've done the work in advance and you've done it with those people talking out your triggers, hearing their triggers, developing epistemological trust, trust in figuring out what we know and what we don't know. And then your hyper vigilance goes down. Your anxiety goes down because you've developed trust in shared knowing. 
the search to know, not just this is true and everything else is wrong. <laughs> An active unfolding of knowing in a shared, grounded, considerate way. Mentalizing. It needs to have a better word. But mm -hmm. It is what it is. <laughs> yeah, this is helpful, your feedback too, Ali, because when I grew up, um, the fact that I was more capable of, of cognitive, I have more cognitive pace than my mother, that was a big trigger for her. So I got punished for that a lot. So it still hurts. So I learned to keep myself small and never excel in stuff I really liked. So now I know by this mentalization that I switched that into this harsh stance of I'm coming up for space for intellectual stuff and mentalization and all that kind and different perspectives. And I fucking don't allow this tunnel vision anymore, but I'm doing the same with having this harsh stance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of pain under it. Yeah. So my reflection and Ellie's reflection of two different perspectives of how you landed, maybe a bit, you know, brutal in your face, has a given Chantal space to reflect. Yeah. And see how her stance is coming out of pain that's unexpressed. Yeah. I didn't know. And she voluntarily shared that. We didn't have to say, what's your trigger and what's your flashback? And let's unpack the story. <laughs> Just the added space of perspectives and a safe place to say, this is what happened to me around this. And this is what happened to me is opening up more revealing, more knowing of each other's inner world. Yeah. And I, I like brutal. Please do brutal for me because I don't have to consider what are people saying. It's just honest, it's straight up front. I can work with that. It's helping, it's supportive. Such good thing for my autistic brain to be like this, and then I can work with that. And if I, have, if I can review this, I can write out and visualize all these perspectives, and then it, it can sink in. So this is great for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Chantal's getting a lot out of this. Yeah. And she didn't even do any homework. No. How is that possible? She came unprepared. <laughs> I came late and somehow she's getting all this amazing insight. Yeah, perhaps I don't do my preparations anymore. That's not <laughs> me. <laughs> no, no. That's I, I my do both. <laughs> Excuse me? That's my secret. No, no Don't preparation. Prepare. No. <laughs> yeah, perhaps the preparations is feeding my uh, hypervigilance because I think I need to cover everything. Yeah, the behavior, if you're over preparing, yeah. is saying there's danger or yeah. I must do. So yeah. That could add extra anxiety. Oh, this is so good. Yeah, absolutely. So Chantal's getting res oh, some big insights. Kelly, you were fixated on trying to get a solution fast. Are you still pressuring yourself for solutions or where is your anxiety? It was pretty low until just now, but <laughs> <laughs> Be honest. That's honest. That's oh, your perspective. Yeah. yeah. It is. <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. What was the question again? <laughs> Dang, sorry. I recall in the past was... you were saying you were urgent for a solution. That was part of your rational and all your other framing. Mm -hmm. You had to get a solution and you were feeling anxious because you didn't have a solution. So. 
I was revisiting that theme for you, if anything mm-hmm. has changed from that prior stance of yours. No, I wasn't looking for a solution anymore. I was just sort of floating along with the stories. Then your stance has changed. Taking it in. Do you remember in the past when you were in the spotlight? Mm-hmm. You wanted a solution and wanted to see if it's rational or not rational. And then Ellie jumped in and gave you a little bit of a rope. Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Huh. Yeah. And then now no. you don't have, you're not no. noticing an urgency. Not so to much. To get a solution. Is that progress? Is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Do you have any subjective Uh, self-evaluation? It's good, but it feels uneasy still. Um, Ah, why? I want spotlight because I'm bored. Why does it feel uneasy? How dare you? You should feel shame for feeling uneasy. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, I know. I should know better. You're supposed to feel enjoyable and interested. And yes. balanced and all that other and bullshit stuff in the beginning. What we're, yeah, some of the other... <laughs> it should be like a thrill. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it is thrilling. Sort of. Heart rate goes up. Um, no. It's not there anymore. No. I don't... Absent. Yeah. It's absent. But that's also troubling. It's complicated. Oh, it's also troubling that's absent. Well, because yeah. it may be dissociated away or something. Yeah, probably. Is that the concern? Yeah. That's the concern, but I don't know. It doesn't feel the same as fully in that space. But still kind of like I'm drifting away a little bit. I don't I don't know. I don't know what to make of it right now. Are you sure you don't know what to make of it? You you've described yeah. how it feels for you. Right, that's where it was like feeling like it could go. Why isn't that description not good enough for you? I don't know. (laughs) But you had some body jerking before you said that. Yeah. Did you notice that? I I felt it, yeah. Ah, see. (laughs) So you feeling it and me pointing it out is adding that perspective of some visceral jerk of a response. Can you... uh, Consider that or entertain. Oh, you do have an answer. Maybe it's not purple. Yeah. Is yeah, it's pressure. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now your your body is acting out more anxiety, and this was ISTDP. I would try to pressure you for feelings. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Because now the anxiety is activated. Jump in and pressure for feelings. But this is mentalization. Right, right. (laughs) I'm off the hook for that, yes. (laughs) I could tell. Oh, jeez. So maybe sometimes you ask yourself for uh, verbal responses in categories where your body is already giving you sensory feedback that you're saying isn't good enough. Yeah. So if you consider your sensory feedback when you hear questions or go in investigations of mentalizing yourself, that sensory feedback might be a good enough answer for you if you just give it a bit more space. Yeah, it's hard though. I didn't say who said it was easy. I. <laughs> Was, uh, yeah, I wasn't inferring that you were saying it was easy. 
You were saying it to yourself? Yeah. Who are you so. saying it to? I don't know. Everyone and no one at the same time. <sighs> we started off saying mentalization is hard. It's painful. It's difficult. It's foreign. So you saying it's hard is good evidence that you're mentalizing. You're trying. That's actually a sign of progress, a sign of something to celebrate, maybe. Let it sink in. This is just a mentalization uh, case study, group case study exploration practice session where I've used no visuals and no auditory or vid video clips yet, or maybe the whole meeting, even though I spent all this energy and effort to do and all of that. <laughs> I'm disappointed my brother abandoned me, but I'm used to it, so I shouldn't. <laughs> oh no. Damn. Oh no. That's a theme. Why did that trigger you, Kelly? <laughs> I'm familiar with that territory. Ah. You're setting myself up for more disappointment. Yes. That's not I don't so know how, uh, how does it make you feel? I'm just focused on the theme. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> One less thing to worry about. I was like going, All with right. a neocon, like going, oh, if the group pounces on my brother, do I take his side or would I take the group's side? How would uh, I let it play out? <laughs> I didn't know. I was like, oh. so, I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> yeah. Solved itself. It solved itself. So, but I did spend some extra energy trying to consider, to prepare in advance with my mentalization and paranoia, but mm -hmm. new, uh, unknown chaos. Let me play out some scenarios in advance, so I have at least some sort of uh, pre-programmed approaches in case uh, certain chaos happens. But I didn't want to overinvest in it because nothing might happen, which is essentially what happened. So. Mm -hmm. What about future? A revisit? Yeah. By him or other people? By him. Oh, you want me to or think about that now? Fully prepared. Sure. It's mental. I am not that. fully prepared. Okay. I can spend my, I can spend 10 more hours just preparing for the potential and it still won't be enough. No, probably not. Hmm. But I'm lazy. Sure. Yes, you're the epitome of lazy, sure. And what's the danger? So. Okay, 920, and we've mentalized with most of the active people, unless anybody who's been lurking wants to join in mentalizing. Fun, come on, it's... Uh, exciting. It's good right. for thrill, thrill seekers. God, it's... when you guys were listing that shit, that was, that, that was my initial trigger, honestly, was, was, yeah. And then, and then, and yeah, right. 
that, that's how it that was when it really started to be the you know. <laughs> uh, it's uh, exciting to entertain it it, it was exciting uh, yeah all of zoe's painful weird responses <laughs> Mm. Maybe I triggered one of her defenses by putting on the slot. <laughs> Get your stuff out there. But mentalization, so that's one therapy approach that uses that as a foundation. Um, ISTDP might call mentalization as observing ego and also the therapist role to call out defenses and play that role of mentalization for the patient. Uh, ACT, they have self as context, so they would try to point out the uh, push towards a more adaptive self instead of an avoidant self. So that's sort of their way of working with mentalization. And then CBT would just break down like your triggered thoughts and try to get you to consider a different thought or conclusion based on different experiences. So we all sort of mentalize when we need to, but often we just do it only when we're forced to. We don't actively build this muscle of pressuring ourselves to explore perspectives and pushing other people to consider uh, our perspective or taking the perspective in a more mentalizing, uh, neutral uh, sort of groundwork. Because it's kind of, it's not as dramatic. It's much more dramatic when we're like, you know, yelling at people for betrayal wounds and attacking them for being horrible people. That's much more exciting. <laughs> but unfortunately, when we're attacking people, sharing a perspective that's important, that attacking dramatic way usually doesn't make the other person receptive. That's... Uh, <laughs> It's very traumatic and entertaining, but somehow, for some fucked up reason, the the target of the attack takes it personal, right? gets defensive, and attacks back with even more perspectives. So there's amazing sharing of two perspectives really fast, but often there's little room for mentalization. I don't know why. Maybe it's against human nature. So. Stay in a mentalizing mode when you're being onslaught with your character being destroyed by the other person. It's, just... <laughs> it's hard to receive that feedback. <laughs> Only transference-based therapists do that. <laughs> Look at some of Frank Yeoman's <laughs> case oh, yeah. study examples where he gets... <laughs> and even... You can see him flinching hate. a little too, yeah. <laughs> then he needs to get the therapists of or the watchers to talk him back to life. <laughs> and then get another five more sessions of projections and attacks. <laughs> That's some inter entertainment. Yeah, transparency space therapy. It's less boring than mentalization. <laughs> okay, four minutes to 9.30. How do we wrap up the formal session? I didn't even use any of the memes. There are memes? There are memes. Like, what am I supposed to do with that? What? What am I supposed to do with that? What? What am I supposed to do with that? What? What am I supposed to do with that? What? What am I supposed to do with that? What?
or this is a way to challenge. So this is sort of mentalizing. He's okay, trying to figure I need out. proof. He's okay, trying to figure I need out. proof. He's okay, to I need out. proof. He's okay, to figure I need out. proof. He's okay. To... I did ask. Then Zoe had this nice, mean, precise. Love something concrete. Keep the ice plan in the concrete. Love something concrete. Keep the ice plan in the concrete. Love something concrete. Keep the ice plan in the concrete. Love something. <laughs> And that's a bit out of context, so to give you some context, it was around this feeling. Oh my god, pretty good, yeah. 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 Oh, you play. Oh my god, pretty good, yeah. Oh my god, pretty good, yeah. Oh my god, pretty good, yeah. So these are examples of natural feelings that come up when mentalization goes offline and you have non-mentalization modes that flood confusion and certainty and, and create these feelings of where you cry for something concrete. Love something concrete. Keep it a face plan in the concrete. Love something concrete. Keep it a face plan. What am I supposed to do with that? What? What am I supposed to do with that? What? What am I supposed to do with that? What? What am I supposed to do with that? What? What am I? So I've tried to role model how to introduce uh, feedback in a more disarming way and how to invite other people to consider perspectives so that you don't fall into having to just cry for any sort of rope. I say, what am I supposed to do with that? What? What am I supposed to do with that? What? What am I supposed to do with that? What? What am I supposed to do with that? What? What am I? If we have better mentalization, then we might not need to resort to <gasps> the sort of desperate measures for uh, some sort of shared perspective or some sort of uh, less drowning, maybe. <laughs> or less flooding. So it's a hard sell, but we will work on it more in the future. I use this visual in person. <clears throat> Epistemology, ontology, and axiology. <clears throat> and I linked it to A, B, and C. So thinking feeling head heart cut or schizoid cluster b and cluster c <laughs> and then the shared epistemology sort of what i was trying to role, role model so it's like how do you know how do i know how do we know let's explore knowledge let's try to create epistemological trust by talking out different perspectives And then trying to say, oh, huh? <laughs> so when people say something crazy, I actively sort of push back and say, that doesn't make sense to me. I don't get it. <laughs> You're promoting mentalization. Chantal's promoting mentalization, but she's doing it in a top down. People must do it. This seems like a dissonance. Let me point it out. Then I could use some ontology. What is reality? What is true? And then it's like, oh, really? <laughs> is this really your perspective? Is this really happening? And then we could talk about axiology. This had a lot of potential to explore and maybe in a future meeting. So axiology is a broader philosophical category that includes ethics, aesthetics, morality, judgment, value, and worth. Then I simplified it to what's most important. And then in the meeting, I talked about modus operandi. Let's think about what's the motive behind people's overreaction, behavior, and actions. And if we understand people's axiological philosophy, 
then we can predict that their behavior and we can talk to them from their value system. So even somebody who is divorced from reality and just makes up pretend mode, they still will have some level of modus operandi. They'll still have some sort of value system, axiological position. And we've talked about this in meetings, but look for your purpose, look for meaning. What's the why behind the what? This is all axiological territory. And then in the meeting, we had a bunch of people act out contempt and urgency. <laughs> Iman was just looking for any trigger to, to get to hate social justice warriors and just attack them in the room where there was no one to attack. Brian showed up and they had a back and forth. That was pretty exciting. Because <laughs> Brian's a sales guy and he likes to just push buttons. So. <laughs> So because our society doesn't teach people to learn self-directed learning, they did, society isn't prioritizing philosophy and the basics of philosophy. How do you know stuff? What can you know? How much, what is the extent of knowledge? What is the limits of knowledge? What is the limits of perspective? Essentially mentalization territory here. People are stupid about this, then they have to absorb shit from authority. They have to absorb, absorb stuff from superego injunctions because they can't think for themselves. They're not taught to trust their own knowledge seeking, figuring out muscle. You disable people from self mentalizing and you make them good lemmings. And then you combine it by joining ontology, finding other people to help reality test. And then link that group mind with other people's knowledge. So combine A and B. So then you can get smarter and more grounded because you've tested and talked out the stuff you know, the stuff you don't know, the extent of what you know and what other people know and don't know pruned it out to get it fine-tuned for reality. So then when you get these two handled, you get more choices to chase after what you value. You're not navigating all this confusion, potential dangers, because you have a map, a knowledge map that matches and is tested with reality and tested with people in your group, people that you know. So you're not wasting time navigating the pitfalls of minefields of social interactions, setting boundaries and running away from things when things are chaotic and abandoning your brother just because you do that. <laughs> so if you got A and B handled, then you have more choices to chase after what's meaningful for you. So you can expend your energy more efficiently on what's meaningful, beautiful, uh, worthy, valuable to you. And then for the meeting, I did a framework for gaslighting. So gaslighting attacks A, B, and C. So I attack A by sowing confusion, giving word salad and punkagisms to make everyone say, huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> What do I do with that? <laughs> then I can attack other people's reality by saying, everybody's dominant frame is bad, except my dominant frame, but I'm not using a dominant frame because I'm just attacking everybody else's dominant frame. <laughs> Clever. That's a good attack. <laughs> then if you want to up it, then you add some like self-hate and urgency, emergency. Flood panic and paranoia with contempt and urgency so, to quash out other voices. The beauty of gaslighting. <laughs>